Good morning, Velma Hagar here. In this beautiful morning, I'm getting ready to go to the beach and I'm very excited. So, but I just have this on my heart and so I stopped. I have got exactly 15 minutes before my ride gets here. So here goes. You know, I rarely hear preachers talk on one subject that I think is so doggone important. I believe it is one of the hidden treasures in the Bible. And it is this, God says, bring me in remembrance of my word. It actually says, argue your case with me. I, I don't know about you, but I, are we missing something here? God actually tells us, come before him. Look, this is how I read that. And if any pastors or people who don't teach on this find me an error, please correct me. But I went through and I looked at all the commentaries. I, I'm not reading this wrong. God actually tells us, bring me in remembrance of my word. So here you are, you're praying for something, right? Not happening, not coming about. You need to get before God and you need to argue with him. I don't mean disrespectfully. I don't mean yell at him. I mean contend with him. That's what it says to do. Present your case, he says. So, this is the key to this. If you don't know what the word says, you don't know what your rights, your promises are. Those promises are true. They're all yes and amen. So why aren't they happening? Well, there's one of two reasons. Sometimes God has another plan. And that, that happens, you just have to say, all right, I've done everything I know to do. I've presented my case. I've prayed, I've done everything I know to do. And it hasn't come to pass. So now, in this case, it says, stand and believe. There's nothing more you can do. But until you've done everything you know to do, you cannot complain about a promise not being answered. Now he says, bring me in remembrance of my word. So what is the word that is applied to what you're believing God for? What is it? Do you have any idea? Because if you don't have an idea, you're going in blind. It's like going before a judge and not having any evidence. Okay, so now this is the key. There's little promise books all over. You could buy little promise books that have over 7,000 promises. Over 7,000. And I want to ask again, how many do you know? How many promises do you know? Because that's your legacy, or that's your inheritance, I should say. That is what God as your father has left you on this planet. You're the beneficiary if you are a Christian. It'd be like not reading the will that your parents left all your their stuff to you. You never read the will, so you don't even know what's yours. The Bible, I, I submit to you, is a written will of God to you as a believer. And you're not reading it? Hello? Anybody home? <laughs> I love it when I, I start shaking my finger. <laughs> that old Italian, that mean Italian. <laughs> okay, anyway, that's... <laughs> I just totally amused myself. You know, you are supposed to stir yourself up. What the heck? <laughs> so, I amused myself this morning. Okay, but... Let's get back to this because it's really important and I got to get going because Darlene's coming to pick me up and we're headed out to the beach for a few days. I love it. But, okay, find the promise. Let's say that God, he, you need healing. Well, there are tons of scriptures in the Bible about healing. Tons. Just find one or two. But if you present a case, if you were going to a court to present a case, the more evidence you have, the more solid the case. I don't know how God thinks, but to me, I'm going to find more than one. I'm going to say, God, you promised that by the stripes of Jesus, I would be healed if I believed in him. You promised me, God, that I walk in divine health all the days of my life. You promised me, God, that I'll be like a tree planted by the water that nothing will shake. You promised me, Lord, that if I consider the poor in my time of need, you will hasten to lift me off my sickbed. 
Now, that's only a few of the promises about healing that God has given to his people. Find your promise and call it out to God and say to him, God, you know, I know I haven't done everything right, but I have considered the poor. Remember the time that I took, went over to the mission and I took $500 or I took a bag of food or I gave that money to the person on the street? That was considering the poor, Lord. So you promised me if I do that, you will raise me off my sick bed. That's the kind of contending that you're going to do with the Lord. Got it? I mean, this is good. This is powerful. Get this and do it. Only believe. You have to believe it. That's the key. And Jesus has to be your Lord so that all of those promises are yours. Oh, my time goes so fast. You know, I need to be preaching this morning because I'm really in the mood. In Treasures and Secret Places, I would be so amiss if I didn't remind you. It's on Amazon. Velma Hagar, Hidden Treasures in Secret Places. This book is off the charts and it gives you tons of the promises. Tons. Every day you'll get a promise in here. I'm big on promises. Over six minutes I talked. You know, I'm getting more wordsy as I get older. All right, you guys. I'm bidding you a blessed day. I'm going to go have some fun. You have some too. And remind God of what he said. Bye.